Could you imagine it? Or did you realize that we do in fact already live in such a world where we have the technology and resources to save the coral reefs? With coral reefs and aquatic life always being my passion and the extreme rate that we see today of coral bleaching, I felt the need to expand in my first video by going into a little bit more detail on how exactly we can do this. Experts say, for example, at the current rate of coral bleaching, all the coral reefs will be gone within the next 20 years. If I've learned anything in this course, it's that changing a civilization's toxic habits that may be the cause of bleaching is going to be a very tough and very time-consuming process, which we do not have. If we in fact only have 20 years to save the reefs, I feel that looking to another solution may be the only way. Instead of trying to save the corals by trying to change everyone and everything, maybe the best way to save them is through practices and technology that we already have at our disposal. Why wait for the world to change and listen when we can act and start making positive changes now with what we have? What exactly do I mean by this? Well, if it is true and we only have 20 years to save the coral reefs, we essentially do not have time to change the world to a sustainable one and save the coral reefs at the same time. That would almost be like reinventing the wheel, and as we all know, trying to change the world to a sustainable one has been anything but a quick and easy process. I believe the best way we can save the corals are using things at our disposal and are already good at doing and using. For example, our technology, science, and genetically modifying things to better us could be applied to saving the coral reefs. If you don't know by now, corals are in fact living organisms. Have you ever heard about the doctors and scientists today that grow body parts and organs in labs in things as simple as petri dishes? Well, my thought process is this. If we can do that for body parts and organs, why can't we apply that same technique and science to growing corals in labs? It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You may be wondering why exactly no one has done this or thought of this before. Well, in the past couple years, as a matter of fact, some people have actually started to do exactly this, if not something similar. Dr. Vaughn, who I talked about in the first video, the guy that discovered a way to increase coral growth by nearly 40%, has started a new practice to save the corals in which he calls microfragmenting. Microfragmenting is a process in which you take tiny parts or frags of a coral using a specialized saw to grow them in special conditions in which their growth rate is increased and the speed in which they reach sexual reproductive maturity is increased. Dr. Vaughn, since using this method, has been able to get corals to reach this maturity age in which they can reproduce in just three years' time. This is opposed to the 25 to 75 years in which it takes in the wild for corals to reach such a level of maturity. Well, the time difference this big in terms of getting the corals to a maturity level in which they need to reproduce, the pros of using Dr. Vaughn's methods here are pretty obvious. I think the future of saving the coral reefs are in this method or a similar method. I'm not the first to feel this way though, as small companies in the south have started to open greenhouses in their backyards and on a small scale and using Dr. Vaughn's methods to grow corals. The natural sunlight provided by a greenhouse and the sun grow corals exceptionally well and combined with Dr. Vaughn's methods have so far provided nothing but success. I believe if we can get organizations to adopt the same practices and start growing corals in let's say greenhouses or on a much larger scale, we can at least stall the overall extinction of corals. Once we get the world back on track or to a sustainable means of living, we then can gather all the corals harvested in such special conditions assisted by Dr. Vaughn's methods and re-implement them back into the wild, back into the coral reefs, essentially re-establishing and regrowing coral reefs, just like replanting a tree.